Good morning. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you may have caught on that I like to get out into remote or backcountry areas as much as possible when I'm looking for wildlife to find and photograph. This week's video is going to be very different as I'm not coming to you from the backcountry, I'm coming to you from my backyard. And I wanted to talk about a few of the things that I've done in this yard to make it more welcoming for wildlife and some of the things that I look for when I'm trying to uh, find wildlife back here to photograph. Uh, this video, I'm going to apologize in advance, there may be some background noise. Again, I am in a neighborhood setting and uh, there are cars and things that are driving all around, so I apologize for any background noise that there may be. As I go through a few of these things to talk about, I'm going to focus on the uh, needs that animals have. Animals need food, they need water, they need a place to make their home or to feel safe, and those are some of the things that I'm going to talk about, things that I've done uh, in my yard to make them, again, more habitable for wildlife. And let me specify all of the video footage in this this week's video, all of the pictures in this week's video, uh, that's all content that I have gotten here in my current yard or in a yard that I've lived in in the last, the last few years. Uh, first thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, places that you can create in your yard to help animals feel safer or to make their homes. Uh, let me preface this by saying over the last year and a half that we've been in this house, almost two years, um, I've noticed groups of quail that kind of go around the neighborhood. They've never really come into my yard though until about a week and a half ago. And it was something very simple that I did to get these quail to come into my yard. And that thing is this log right here. This is something so simple. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was out exploring an area and uh, I noticed that the county was there. They were clearing out a bunch of the old wood and logs there and they had this big old pile of discard wood that they were gonna haul away. So uh, I spoke with a gentleman there overseeing the project and was able to come home with this log and another one and the things the thing that I liked about this is it's a very good sized log and it's hollowed out in the middle. So I took this home initially as a hope that maybe a family of skunks or raccoons would take up residence in this log. We'll see what happens. Uh, as I was saying with the quail though, uh, I put this log out a few weeks ago and about a week and a half ago I noticed that uh, a family of quail or a group of quail started hanging out in my yard and they pretty much haven't left since and they hang out mostly in this area on or around this log and it's just a place where they feel safe i hope they make this area their home as it's been incredibly fun to watch them and uh yeah this is just something that i've put into my yard to make it feel a little bit more wild and a little bit more safe for wildlife. And it's, it's just been awesome, a great experiment to put this here. And uh, like I say, that group of quail, they've hardly left my yard uh, since they found it. And uh, I just saw them a few minutes ago, um, just back behind you. Uh, and they were just foraging through my, my lawn, getting some food, but it's been something, a great addition to the yard and uh, something very, very simple that you can do in your own yard to help attract wildlife. Uh, animals, like I say, they need a place to live, they need a place to feel safe, so that's something that you can do to help animals uh, feel safe.
going to take you over to another section of the yard now and uh, we'll talk about something else that you can do to help animals feel welcome and hopefully even make their homes in your yard. Uh, something very simple and something you may already have in your yard and you don't even know it. Got a bird right here. Okay, let's go. You know, as I'm talking about uh, things that you can leave in your yard or bring into your yard to help animals feel safer at home, I wanted to touch on these trees back here. Uh, there's a group of trees back here and I've been able to identify six or seven uh, tree holes or nesting cavities in these trees that uh, are potential spots for birds to come in to make their nest. I was taking my, uh, dumping my compost the other day and I noticed a pair of black capped chickadees uh, flying in and out of one of the holes in the tree. So I watched them for a couple of hours and both of them, they would fly in and uh, be in there for a few seconds and then come on out and they would have a beak full of rotted wood and they would dump it, go back in and repeat that. And for, you know, the two so hours that I was watching them, they just kept doing that so I believe that they're excavating a, uh, a hole for a potential nest I'm hoping that they nest there that would be awesome to get them nesting just in my backyard here uh, but these are things that you can look for you know later today go out to your trees and uh, just go through them maybe you already know of some but look through all your trees and see if you can find any uh, nesting cavities. This is a great time of year to find those because birds are gonna start moving into them and making them their nest, basically. So uh, just earlier this morning, before the sun was up, and I came out and in this tree behind me, I noticed uh, a few weeks ago that there were some woodpeckers, you know, excavating out a new hole. So this morning I came out and watched them for a little bit. And they come in sporadically, uh, not as frequent as the chickadees, but they'll come in and, you know, poke around a little bit. But uh, this hole's been getting deeper and deeper each day. So uh, I'm hoping that they, you know, eventually make it into a, a nesting cavity and I'm able to have a pair of nesting woodpeckers in my backyard. That would be awesome. Uh, speaking of nesting woodpeckers, my sister, a few years ago, let me know that she had a pair in her yard. So I went up there and was able to photograph some, uh, a pair of woodpeckers for about an hour, an hour and a half or so. And they would go in, feed the young, come back out. And it was just fun to watch them. And then last summer in the same tree hole in her yard, she had uh, some other birds in there that she told me about. So I went back up and uh, it was a family of sparrows that had moved in. And it was fun to watch those parents come in feed the young, go back out, and just do that repeatedly. So uh, these tree holes, nesting cavities, can be great opportunity to find and photograph wildlife in your backyard. Uh, if they're big enough tree holes, you might even get an owl in your yard or something. So uh, that's something that you can leave in your trees uh, if you've got it, uh, even if you've got a dead tree with a big hole in it or something, as long as it's not a danger to your property or your neighbors or something, just leave it and see what moves in because uh, it's very likely that at some point you will have something move into that, uh, that cavity or tree hole. Uh, just awesome potential that you can, uh, for wildlife that you have or can have in your yard.
Next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, food. Animals need food. Uh, to get animals to come into your yard, like I was saying before, you want to give them the things that they need. So we've covered shelter and homes and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about food for a little bit. So uh, this is a uh, birdhouse slash bird feeder that my son and I actually made. And uh, it's got a little bird feeder right there. I've got a few of them up. Uh, I do, you know, regularly keep bird feeders uh, throughout the year to feed the birds. Uh, but you know this brings in quite a few species of songbirds and, and different types of birds and it's been great to be able to see and photograph them uh, food for wildlife though it doesn't need to be food that you give them all the time uh, in my yard in that first area that i was at this morning kind of by that log um, i uh, last summer i had i believe it's called mullen or mullion Correct me if I'm wrong on that, um, but uh, it's just, you know, people consider it a weed or whatever, um, but it was this big, long, flowering stalk, and uh, it had these pretty little yellow flowers that, that would kind of pop, but uh, it was cool to see that. I was out doing some yard work uh, last summer, and I noticed that there was a woodpecker flying um, flying on that and it would pick out the seeds from the flowers and then it would fly you know eat them and fly away and then the chickadee came in and started doing the same thing so there are natural food sources within your yard that you can leave uh, for birds to you know eat from uh, this tree right here is an apple tree I do leave some of the apples on there I don't harvest them all um, I'll leave some of the apples on there and let the animals have them. I've got deer that come into my yard and eat the apples in the fall. Uh, the birds pick at them. I've got a cherry tree and a plum tree behind me and, you know, some other trees. And it's just been a great opportunity to see the different birds that come in and uh, pick from those, the fruit that I leave on there for them. Uh, this summer, one of the projects that I'm going to be working on is creating areas in my yard just filled with wildflowers, uh, natural wildflowers to my area, but flowers that butterflies and hummingbirds, specifically hummingbirds, um, like. So that's, you know, a good natural source of food that you can plant in your yard is just the native natural wildflowers that these birds look for. Just plant them in your yard and the birds will come. Uh, I've had hummingbirds in my yard before, I just don't have enough flowers to sustain them, so I'm just going to fill as much of the yard up as possible uh, with, with flowers and hopefully that'll bring them in. So food sources don't need to be bird feeders. There's a lot of natural food sources that you can bring into your yard for wildlife. I've got a chickadee right up here. love that sound. I love those chickadees. It might be one of the ones that's nesting back here, or hopefully nesting. And there's a woodpecker, hopefully nesting again. So. Something else you want in your yard is a source of water. This is something I don't have yet, so I'm not going to talk a lot about this. Uh, this is something, again, this summer I'm planning on introducing. Um, I'd really like to get some bird baths in here, but uh, in my yard I've got these natural uh, little hills um, and in between them there's these depressions. So I'm actually going to put in a little tiny pool, um, not a swimming pool, but just a natural type of pool. Water gathers kind of in the depressions anyways. So uh, I'm just going to try to excavate that out a little bit and uh, make just a very shallow natural pool for animals to come get drinks at. Uh, again, that's not something I'm going to talk about now. And, uh, you know, as, as I make it, if that's something you're interested in seeing, I can, I can uh, kind of document that a little bit. But, um, yeah, water, something very important for animals as well. I am lucky where I've got a little stream just below me. Uh, it's not on my property, but there is uh, a little creek just 
below me here. So the animals in the area do have a natural source of water uh, nearby. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I know it's quite different from what I usually do, uh, but this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. You know, at least me, I can't be out in nature up in the mountains all the time as much as I would love that. It's just not possible. So the more you can find wildlife in your own neighborhood or in your own yard, uh, the more you'll have opportunities to practice, you know, photographing them. And uh, your yard is a great place to start. You're here a lot of the time anyways, so might as well find the animals that live in your yard. And uh, the more you spend time with them, the more used to you they'll get and uh, the greater potential for, for pictures that you'll get. So I hope this video has given you a few ideas of things that you can do to make your yard more welcoming for wildlife and uh, entice them to make it their home. They need places to live too, they need food to eat, you know, so why not have that be your yard? And again, if you're against uh, bird feeders, things like that, there are some excellent things that you can do to get those animals food in a more natural way. Uh, plants that you can have in your yard and uh, just, again, things that you can do to get those animals here regardless. So uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been fun, you know, making this from my own yard and over the past uh, weeks and months getting footage of these animals for this video. It's been fun. Next week, I won't be in my yard. Uh, I, uh, I'll be out in some more remote areas getting some wildlife and getting back to the adventure portion of things. And uh, I've been working on some fun stuff this week as well. So um, I've got some pretty fun videos coming and I hope you're looking forward to them because uh, they've been a lot of fun putting together. Uh, until then though, I hope you have a great week and we'll see you, see you next week. Thank you.